Yeah, this yummy kid, he was killing ever people. That's mad. Yeah, he was dupping ever man. Yeah, he was about that life, yeah? So his own people, kids were talking, mm. has killed him. In Chicago, well on its way to recording 930 homicides, the second highest on record. Among the dead, 14-year-old Siobhan Dean, shot in the head by a stray bullet during a shooting spree in the city's Roseland neighborhood that injured two other teens. Chicago police quickly identified 11-year-old Robert Sanderfer as the gunman. That led to an intense three-day manhunt. Gang leaders decided that Robert needed to be silenced because he knew too much, so they ordered Craig to kill him. At 36, Craig Hardaway is older, wiser, but he's also a little nervous when it comes to this interview. I always saw media as the enemy. 20 years after a notorious murder that thrust him into the national spotlight, for the first time ever, he and his younger brother Derek are talking about the case that changed their lives forever. It took me years to really admit and accept my role in it. It was an unusually chilly September night in 1994 as the body of an 11 year old was loaded into the back of an ambulance. He had been shot twice in the back of the head in a hit ordered by the leaders of the Black Disciples. What happened at night? Chaos. Despite numerous requests over the years, this is the first interview Craig Hardaway has agreed to do. Craig was only 16 years old when his mugshot was plastered on TV arrested for the murder of 11-year-old Robert Yummy Sandifer. His brother Derek, 14 at the time, was too young for his mugshot to be released. He was convicted of driving the getaway car. All three, Craig, Derek, and Yummy, members of the same gang, chasing money, respect, and trying to make a name for themselves. For me, it was more like identity. It was more like, okay, I want to belong to something. I want to be a part of something. It's an addiction. It's a strong addiction, and it pulls you in quick. It was a clear black night, a clear white moon, Warren G was on the streets. The summer of 1994 saw Nate Dogg and Warren G's Regulate topping the charts, O.J. Simpson preparing for the trial of the century, and Chicago well on its way to recording 930 homicides, the second highest on record. Among the dead, 14-year-old Siobhan Dean, shot in the head by a stray bullet during a shooting spree in the city's Roseland neighborhood that injured two other teens. Chicago police quickly identified 11-year-old Robert Sanderfer as the gunman. That led to an intense three-day manhunt. Gang leaders decided that Robert needed to be silenced because he knew too much, so they ordered Craig to kill him. Why did Robert die? By means of not my control. And was it your life versus his life? Absolutely. You thought it was that simple as either you do this or you die. And that's how it always boils down. It's, it's not like any wriggle room when you live in that lifestyle. So you're saying you had no other choice? Yes. That's what I'm saying. Derek refused to leave his brother's side. A lot of people don't know that, that he actually took me home. And I can just feel someone right. So when I asked him what's going on and he told me everything, I refused to let him go by himself. I should have been more of a big brother than us get out, right? But at the time, that ain't the way you think. I'm still a minor, we still kiss. Hours after the murder, both brothers were in custody, and months later, they were convicted felons. Craig, 60 years for murder, Derek, 45 for driving the Gataway car. They were the only two ever tried in the case, even though they say others were involved. Why not tell? Because I was believing in the foolishness they was telling me far as the gangs and that lifestyle. What did they tell you? How they gonna be there, support, take care of us, our families, everything. And? Nothing. Literally nothing. No letter, no contact, no money for me, my family, they needs, no lawyer, literally nothing. Abandoned by their fellow gang members and isolated from their families, the brothers have spent the past 20 years rehabilitating themselves. Both have gotten their GEDs and associate degrees. 
Derek is cultivating his landscaping skills by working in the prison garden, and Craig is involved in anti-violence programs. But for Craig, there is one piece of unfinished business, reaching out to Yummy's family, who has not responded to him or us. What would you say to them? Wow, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I'll answer any questions that they may have concerning that night, leading up to that night. Both brothers say they think about Yummy's murder every day. The tears, they say, have long since dried up, Instead, they're focused on getting out one day and making sure that others don't end up on the same path that led them to prison. I think if they hear it from someone that lived it and been through it, it might reach them a little bit better. I know most people uh, listen to this and be like, what the hell do this dude know? He been in jail for 20 years, he should have did what he did, yada, 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 yada. That still don't take away from the message. Value your life, you matter. Look in the mirror and tell yourself that you matter. Um, Accept that the responsibility of your life ultimately rests with you. Imagine the ever young kids in that area. Like, obviously, there's, he's not going to be the only one. Mm. Years later, now I see the drill scene. Mm. There's an artist called Little Jojo, yeah? He was mm -hmm. beefing with Chief Keeper and them, and them. It's about 10 men in the video, 15, 20 men, they all got guns pointing at the camera. Lil Jojo was one of the early rappers of Chicago's drill movement. He shocked the whole city by dropping the song BDK, which took shots at the Black Disciples. But the song also made him a big target and eventually cost him his life. Here's a closer look at the story of Lil Jojo. Lil Jojo was a rapper from the Inglewood neighborhood in the south side of Chicago. When he was only a few months old, his dad got locked up for attempted murder and spent 13 years in jail. He also has a brother who's a rapper named Swag De Niro, and the two was close growing up. Jojo is from the Brick Squad set of the Gangsta Disciples, who are known to beef with the Lamron set of the BDs. At one point, Brick Squad was also allied with SCL EBT, which meant they beefed with O Block and 600. But their main beef was with Lamron because the two hoods were close to each other. A lot of news outlets made it seem like Jojo was an innocent kid who got caught up in a deadly gang beat. But according to those who knew him, Jojo was really about that life, and his name is still respected in the streets. Lil Jojo ain't really know the BDs from O Block. But he did grow up with Lil Reese and Lil Durk. At first, there was no smoke between them. They wasn't cool with each other because they was in separate gangs, but they wasn't actively beefing. There's rumors that the beef really started over a fight at a basketball court. Some dudes from Lamron got into it with some dudes from Brick Squad, and after that, they started taking shots at each other on social media. At that time, Chicago Drill was just starting to blow up, and Keith and Durk was two of the hottest rappers in the city. On March 28, 2012, Durk dropped the track L's Anthem. On the song, he took a shot at Brick Squad, rapping, Brick Squad, I say f em. Wooga World with him, so it's f em. Wooga World is another set of the GDs who are affiliated with Brick Squad. So, they got caught in the beef for being cool with their enemies. L's Anthem is considered one of the most famous Chicago disses of all time because of what happened next. Lil Jojo and Swag De Niro first heard the song on the radio. Hearing his gang get dissed like that on a public platform made Jojo angry. When he heard the diss, he turned to his brother and said, you heard that bro? Hell nah, we gon' go crazy, that's it. Jojo wasn't even a rapper at that point, but when he heard L's anthem, he decided to hop in the booth to respond. On April 27, 2012, Lil Jojo dropped a remix of the Chief Keef song, Every Day, called BDK 300K. 300 is a gang made up of a bunch of BD sets who are cool with each other, which includes Chief Keef, Reese, and Dirk. But instead of just going after them, he also titled the song, BDK, taking shots at the entire gang. The song started a trend of other GD rappers claiming BDK, which just turned up the violence in Chicago. On the track, he also responded directly to Dirk, rapping, Dirk say f Rick Squad, so I can't wait to catch him. Squeeze his f***ing 40, now they got him on a stretcher. The BDs and the GDs have been beefing for a minute, but when Lil Jojo dropped BDK, he brought the attention on the internet, which took the war to a whole different level. The city was going crazy, and the music influenced what was going on in the streets. But Jojo ain't just stopped there. BDK earned him a lot of clout in the city so he kept dropping diss tracks to build his career as a rapper. He followed up with the track Tied Up not long after. In the video for the song, Jojo sends shots at his ops while a Chief Keef lookalike is tied to a chair. At the time, Keef was one of the biggest artists in the world after blowing up with I Don't Like just a few months before. So Lil Jojo knew that this was gonna attract a lot of attention, but Jojo still ain't finished there. In August 2012, he dropped a remix of the Yo Gotti song, I Got That Sack, where he continues to take shots at 300. On the track, he raps, catch him in traffic with Lil Reese, Man, they gon' fill this Mac. BDK, that's my team, and my city got my back. Went to school with these n but that don't mean shit. My n tail knocked him out, you should've seen that shit. He mentions Lil Reese by name, 
and claims one of his homies knocked him out. He also takes shots at Dirk, rapping, Dirk a calling phones, saying he don't want no beef. But f this rap, I ain't gonna talk. I'm gonna leave it in the streets. It sounded like JoJo was suggesting that Dirk try to call him to squash the beef, but he ain't want to hear it. In the outro to the song, they take it a step further by taking shots at David Barksdale, aka King David, the founder of the Black Disciples. At the end of the song, JoJo's homie, Pete Rico, can be heard shouting, JoJo going dumb on Dirk's ass, BDK, die L's, on Queen Day. This in your ops is one thing, but once you drag a legendary OG like King David into the beef, then anything goes. So, Lil Jojo was quickly becoming one of the most hated GDs in the city. Then, on September 4th, 2012, Lil Jojo was murdered after dropping his location on social media. According to rumors, earlier in the day, he saw some dudes from Lamron and shot at them, but ain't hit nobody. Then, while Jojo and his brother was riding through the hood, they spotted Lil Reese. They started yelling out the window, dissing him, and calling him a Lil Reese can be heard yelling back, I'ma kill you. Jojo went home and uploaded the video to YouTube and tweeted about it to mess with his op. He tweeted, just call at Lil Reese 300 in traffic and his daddy trying to talk it out. Hashtag no talking, hashtag brick squad, followed by a link to the video. The video quickly went viral, starting a Twitter war between Jojo and Lil Reese. According to some sources, not long after that incident, Jojo was on the block shooting dice with some of his homies when police pulled up and arrested him for gambling. He was taken down to the station and questioned, but was released the same day. He continued this in Lil Reese online, tweeting out, I'm out here on my two feet, where you at, at Lil Reese, letting Reese know he was ready for the smoke. He took it a step further by following up with, laugh my ass off, I'm on 069, stop the flexing, letting the entire city know his current location. This was a deadly mistake by Lil Jojo. He tweeted his location around 7.30 p.m. and by 9 p.m. he was found dead from a gunshot wound on the 6900 block of South Princeton Avenue, exactly where he said he was online. Witnesses said Jojo was riding his bike when the vehicle pulled up and someone in the car shot him. His brother Swag De Nero denies that Jojo was riding his bike when he was killed, but he was rushed to the University of Chicago Medical Center where he was pronounced dead. Lil Jojo's death had a heavy impact on the city. Chicago Drill was just starting to blow up on a mainstream level, and many thought JoJo was gonna blow up and become bigger than Chief Keep. But when he got killed, it showed how real it gets in Chirac and that a lot of these dudes was living the life they rapped about. The day after JoJo got killed, Chief Keef tweeted, It's sad, cause that JoJo wanted to be just like us. Hashtag laugh my ass off. And dry snitching. Hashtag shh brick boys. A Twitter user also tweeted, at Lil Reese, a real nigga. The Lil nigga JoJo stayed in the car the whole time out of here which Lil Reese retweeted before tweeting damn I just woke up to the Jojo shit Fuck him Swag De Niro clapped back to defend his brother tweeting at Lil Reese 300 use a boy Jojo had you hiding behind your daddy when we pulled up you know what it is he also took shots at Keith and Dirk tweeting at Lil Dirk you dead too Lil bitch. and at Chief Keith you dead too Chief Keith and Lil Reese was both questioning connection with Lil Jojo's murder but no charges were ever filed Keith claims his account was hacked and he ain't tweet those things. But Lil Jojo's mom thinks Keith pays someone to kill her son. After Jojo's death, Brick Squad took on the name Jojo World and they host an annual Jojo Day every September 4th to honor his legacy. There was a lot of media coverage on Lil Jojo's death because of how popular Chicago Drill was getting. The news made it seem like it was a rap beef between him and Keith that eventually led to his death. That might have been part of the reason, but those close to him say Jojo ain't even really no Keith like that. He was really beefing with Lamron, and Keith just caught a couple of disses because he was cool with them, and also the most popular BD rapper in Chicago. No one was ever arrested for Lil Jojo's death, but about a year later, Swag De Niro hinted that whoever was responsible was no longer breathing. He tweeted, You fans can get sent off by this rap if y'all want to. On phone them, y'all don't know how this go for real. Hashtag, no talking. Even the ops know the motherfucker who took my bro ain't walking this earth no more. F him too. Lil Jojo's death will always be tied to the beef with Chief Keith because of the 300k diss. But in reality, it could have been anyone. He took shots at an entire gang, then told the world his location on social media, making him a target for anyone who felt disrespected. Those close to JoJo say he was a real problem in the streets, and his ops saw him as a legit threat. So, it was his reputation that led to his murder more than the music. Lil JoJo is another talented rapper from Chicago who was killed before reaching his full potential. He had a catchy flow and could have made it big if he had enough time to focus on his music. But unfortunately, his reputation caught up to him before he could make it out of the streets.
just reminded me of that yummy thing. Mm. I was like, fuck, that yummy generation's here now. Yeah, that's true. But we're, it was probably already here. We're only seeing this in music videos now. Now, yeah, because media. So like how that. long has this shit been going on? Thank you. You see Charles <laughs> of War stories when it comes to places in Africa, Syria, whatever. This is why that's, I can't that's, drill. that's child, children of war. You get me? Yummy was before drill. Mm. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Fuck the productions. Within a heartbeat, quick. <laughs> quick. Why? Because he's a mom. One thing I'm going to leave on camera for y'all to remember this word right here Yabos. The name of the game is Yabos. Game ain't based on sympathy. If you got sympathy in this spot, you ain't going to never make it. Never make it. Never make it.